Hi, it's Dwyer. It's October the 29th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk football, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be <clears throat> a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, like many of you, I like analytics, and like many of you, I read my share of football analytical uh, columns every week. Well, there is a must-read today. It's on ESPN Plus, ESPN's premium service. It's written by one of the head honchos of Football Outsiders, a guy named Aaron Schatz, and he makes the argument and it's a good argument. It's statistically based. He makes the argument that even before Antonio Brown joins the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, that Tampa is the best team in the National Football League by a mile. In other words, if you're familiar with football outsiders, they do a DVOA analysis, right? It's yards per play. Uh, versus a standardized team. And uh, when you look at Tampa Bay, Tampa has an exemplary defense. More importantly, they have an exemplary offense. Tom Brady is doing much better. And I mean much better than he was doing last year in terms of yards per completion, etc. And of course, the best wide receiving core in the National Football League appears to be the Tampa Bay Buccaneer receiving core. This is even before Antonio Brown joins the team to play in the slot. Now, before the season, I thought there was risk all over the place. Tom Brady leaving New England for the first time in his career. Um, Bruce Arians has a reputation for being a little bit loose, a little bit sloppy. Uh... Rob Gronkowski coming back from a year off. I thought Tampa was an underplay on the season-long win total. I've been watching Tampa for several weeks. I've been looking at their ratings on sites like Pro Football Focus and Football Outsiders. Right? I'm going to back away from my preseason prediction that Tampa would be an under on the number of wins. I'm going to hedge out of that position. Right now, only two teams are getting shorter odds on the NFL futures market than Tampa. Kansas City, the defending champions who have had problems on defense, let's be real. Right? And Baltimore, a team that has a very tough matchup this weekend. We'll find out more about Baltimore when they play the Pittsburgh Steelers this weekend. Well, what I want people to consider is that both of those teams are AFC teams. If you believe in those two teams, the earliest that Tampa would play them if things fall right for all three teams at the top of the futures market right now in the NFL, the earliest Tampa would play them would be in the Super Bowl. In other words, Tampa right now is the only NFC team <clears throat> sitting atop the top three on the odds board for NFL futures. Right? Let me also say, too, again, for the analytical crowd, that ESPN Plus article by Aaron Schatz is a must read. He goes down a lot, including. Bruce Arians is traditional numbers. The numbers Tampa had last year. Understand, Jameis threw 30-odd interceptions last year, which undercut one of the league's elite defenses. Right? He talks about the numbers of Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, right? How they match up against other wide receivers. Just understand that Right now, according to Football Outsiders DVOA metrics, 
the gap between Tampa and the second place team is greater than the gap between the second place team and the seventh rated team. Right? Tampa's going off today at 7 to 1. Let's harmonize this with some earlier videos. I'm always looking for value. I still feel the San Francisco 49ers at 28 to 1 are a must to have in your betting portfolio. Simply put, a must. Right? Look at the teams that Arizona has beaten. And I agree, Arizona has some issues. I prefer quarterbacks who are a little bit older, a little bit more experienced than Kyler Murray. But Arizona has beaten the Niners. Arizona has beaten some other big teams. Arizona's going off at 25 to 1. The purpose of this video is not to dissuade you from doing what you need to do. Having a portfolio that has strong value picks. Right again, let's remember the 28 to 1 um, San Francisco 49ers are the defending NFC champions and had a greater than touchdown lead in the fourth quarter of last year's Super Bowl. But right now, on October the 29th, 2020, Tampa Bay at 5 and 2 statistically is lapping the field. Right? Even the beer game that they lost. Aaron Schatz breaks down how they average more yards per play than the Bears. By a wide margin. They lost that game on penalties. Right? Pay attention to the metrics. Right now Tom Brady is having the kind of season he hasn't had recently. With a wide receiving core, especially after they add Antonio Brown, that's going to be the best in the league with a defense that right now, statistically, is doing better than staying in the NFC, the New Orleans Saints, for example. Right, so Tampa, I'm going to hedge out of my Tampa under win total. I'm going to add a little bit to my Tampa position on futures. Tampa at 7-1. to one. Right? And I'm going to keep an eye on Tampa for the rest of the season. There are some in the football analytics community. Right? The head honcho at Football Outsiders, Aaron Chaps, who believe that this team is the top team. He even lays out the teams with the best DVOAs in history at this point in the season. And believe it or not, the 2020 Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the list. Keep an eye out on Tampa. They're a player. The 7-1 to one future here is an opportunity. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. That Aaron Chats piece can be found on ESPN+. Plus today. Let me point out too that the first couple of paragraphs or so can also be found on regular ESPN. But you miss the heart of the article if you're not an ESPN Plus subscriber. I hope you give it a look. Thanks for stopping by.